Live. Oh, hello. Welcome back to the very first Monday Night Live of 2022. I'm excited to be here with you. I recently uh, contracted a virus, but I did not die. I have recovered, and I'm here with you with the beautiful, intelligent, fecund. Yeah, there's your word of the day. Nisha, solace, hyphen, berry. Nisha loves it. How are you doing? I'm here. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back live with you. Last week, I felt like, damn it, I was going to try to do this, but mm -mm, I couldn't. She could have done it on her own, but no. she was nursing me back to health because she is indeed, indeed, a good nurse. Mm -hmm. so that's what I... What you say, anyways. Oh, you are, no doubt about that. Welcome back. Now, uh, we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can in the next hour or so. We have uh, three excellent moderators in the comments, and if they see any obvious uh, beginner questions, they're going to answer you in the comments. So if you ask a question, uh, be watching the comments because you might get your answer from one of the moderators. They're the people who have a blue name and then like a wrench. Looks like a wrench yeah. logo this other I wish I had a wrench by my name. I just have, a, have check a check mark. mark. I'd rather have a wrench. But I'm a country <laughs> boy, so you know. You'd rather have a tractor beside I'd rather have a tractor beside my name. That is so hey, true. Hey Holly, happy new year. Thanks for the super chat, Holly. Welcome back. Uh you guys ready to rock 2022? Are you ready to make 2022 the best health year of your damn adult life? Because if you are, you've come to the right place because we're going to be helping you all year long reclaim health that you thought you'd lost forever. That's what we do. Yeah. How are you? Are you good? Yeah. Did you tell everybody your news? I bet there are one or two people who don't know your current pregnancy status. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby. Just one baby. We saw it on ultrasound. 12 weeks. Yeah. But we don't know the gender yet. Or the sex. Let's but not. Let's those not. are still up in the air. <laughs> <Let's not. laughs> Don't forget to remind your mama. You know, she always forgets this. Uh, send her a direct message or an email or a text message to say, Mama, they're live right now. Mama. Hey, okay. he doesn't even feel this. Much I feel better. much better. No, I feel he much doesn't. better. He's forcing them. It's something about this being in with our friends that just makes me, I'm, I'm good. Okay, reinventing Melissa. Hey, Melissa. I'm 53, four years post-menopause. Menopause was easy for me. Wow, look yep. at you. I've never been on hormones. In my 30s and 40s, I did a lot of heavy weightlifting, and mm -hmm. I'm getting back into it. How will my lack of hormones affect that? Well, you're definitely going to be able to build muscle. You're definitely going to be able to strengthen your bones, which are your two major goals. These improvements uh, may not come as quickly as you would like for them to come. With your hormones now being at a much lower status, these uh, these things are going to come, but they're just they may not come as quickly as you'd like. That's really the only difference you're going to notice. And it is rare for, but some women don't have any noticeable menopausal symptoms whatsoever. They they go through menopause and it's fine. And that doesn't that in that case, I don't think you need any hormone optimization. You just need to lift your weights and eat your meat. Everything's going to be just fine. Uh, for the record, obviously this man did not go to the doctor, so we don't know if he had the flu no. or the other, like it could no. have been either one. It could have been both. No. Like he don't, I went to the couch. We did nothing special for it. He didn't even take the supplements that he would take you to tell you to take. That's right. Like, he did That's nothing. Right. I'm a terrible patient. That Awful is true. Patient. Yeah. Yep. Here he is. <laughs> Angela says my thyroid has been reviewed for 20 years due to graves. Can I still use iodine? And if so, how do I determine the proper amount? Yeah. Every human on the planet, whether you have a thyroid or not, whether you have thyroid cancer or not, whether you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or not, hypo or hypothyroidism or not, you need iodine for every cell in your body, every single day of your life. Uh, most people do best with at least a thousand micrograms a day. That would be one milligram a day. And so if you had Lugol's 2% iodine, that would be one drop every day in liquid or in food. And that's going to, that's going to give you all the iodine, all your cells need the 150 microgram recommendation from the federal government. That's enough iodine to keep you from having a gorder, which is a big swollen, irritated uh, thyroid. But if what you would like is to have optimal health and not just a lack of a gorder, you need a thousand micrograms a day, at least. 
Tame. I saw. Did you no, see? Oh, okay, nah, you got them. Okay, you right, just, okay, okay. If you okay, want to take over, it. I will go. No, in the honey, no, and watch honey, no. Tame, hey, girl. Uh, hey, beautiful berries. I have symptoms of a UTI, frequent urination, and pelvic pain. But my urine sample says there no, there is no infection. My doctor put me on antibiotics. Anyways, it hasn't helped. What else yeah. could it be? Well, uh, having cystitis. Could, the itis could be an infection, it should, but it would certainly show up on a urinalysis. And the fact that you have all the symptoms of, of, ur, of urinitis or cystitis, but you don't have any signs of infection, hope your doc sent the, the urine for a culture because sometimes the dipsticks don't show positive when there actually is an infection. It could be a fungal infection. It could be a viral infection, or it could just be inflammation of the bladder. Many women have uh, uh, inflammatory cystitis of their bladder, and it's from food they're eating. It's not from a bacterial infection. So it could be any of those causes. And then there's a few other causes I didn't mention as well. Martin says, thank you, Dr. Ken. You saved my life. That's my job. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, PLS Jones. I went from 200 pounds down to 155 in nine months. I got mm. my blood test back. A1C is 5.4. Triglycerides 135. HDL 58. Should I be concerned about my LDL being 328? My cardiologist called me in a stat. Yeah, I'm not worried about my LDL being 250. Uh, and if you were my brother or sister, I would tell you that I would I would be much more worried about you if you were taking a statin than if you had a high LDL. I've got multiple YouTube videos about this, and so does my good friend, Dr. David Diamond, a PhD researcher whose entire career has been focused on lipids, lipidology, LDL, total cholesterol. So watch Dr. David Diamond and watch my other YouTube videos about cholesterol, and you'll understand why this is no big deal. Royal Gush. Hey, Dr. Barry. Glad you're able to see... Uh... You're able to be back and see your health and doing better. Praying for a healthy mini bear. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much for the super chat and the prayers. Uh, I, yeah, that's the one I was Trucking with diabetes. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for the videos. And, and for uh, trucking with diabetes, thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you for sharing this with truckers. Over the road truckers, it is so easy to eat the junk food in truck stops and be so, so terribly unhealthy. So thank you so much. Anytime you guys share this information with an over-the-road driver who basically sits for 12 or 16 hours a day, uh, you teach them that you don't have to go to the gym for an hour a day. You don't have to exercise for two hours a day to lose the gut and to, be, and to regain your health. You can do it with just eating a proper human diet. A. Reed says, what foods did you introduce to Beckett? Our pediatrician said rice cereal and veggies, no meat or eggs for over a year. Please ask your pediatrician where the hell they got that recommendation that you want to see the research it's based on. And if they don't show you some research in human beings that shows that, you're going to report them to the medical board. No, no, don't be an asshole. But but that's ridiculous. This is this is the kind of information that doctors give every day that's a big fat lie. And we're not talking about, oh, you know, your relative's 80 years old, their life's almost done. This is a baby. This is a young child whose entire metabolic life is, is before them. And you're not going to give them meat or eggs for a year? Anyways, to answer your question. I want to know the doctor's name. Put the doctor's name in the comments. I'm going to drive to the city they're in, and I'm going to slap the shit out of them because that's how stupid that advice is. Okay, so Sorry. to answer your question, we introduced Beckett to... Eggs, scrambled eggs, um, liver pate. Yep. He started chewing on me because he, 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 they can't really swallow it, but they can gum like steak and ribs and get the juices and swallow the juices. Yep. So he was chewing on ribeyes and ribs from four months on. And he started really eating probably around eight months, like taking bites and eating them. Yep. Uh, but eggs was pretty much his favorite food. Liver pate, we introduced him to avocado. Yep. Uh, I mean, that was mainly, he loves bacon too. So he, he ate a lot of bacon and sausage. I think that was, the, and that's basically still his main food groups to yep. this day. But I mean, you know. Yeah, the very first foods that went into our child's mouth were meat and eggs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kim says, do I need to exercise while on ketobore or will it make a huge difference? It depends on your goal, Kim Sutton. If your goal is weight loss, the exercise is not going to help you with that much at all. If your goal is to be healthier, to prevent or put off Alzheimer's dementia, 
and to help your brain and your body in hundreds of ways, you need to be exercising. Yeah, it's good for you. Okay, but the difference between exercising, so there's like exercising and then there's like busy work, chronic exercising yeah. and extreme. So getting up and moving uh, and doing weight bearing activity, activity, jumping rope, going for a walk, uh, anything like that is going to be good. Sure, sex. Uh, <laughs> But that's good. But like if you're worried about going to the gym for an hour and staying on the treadmill and burning calories, like don't worry about yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Get up and move, play, and uh, that's going to be what you need there. Yep, 100%. What's Nisha drinking? Kind of wants it to is know. tea. I'm obsessed with tea. Like, okay, I'm you know, we're from Tennessee. But I forgot about iced tea for a long time. And then I went to a restaurant and everybody's drinking iced tea. And I was like, man, I forgot about that. So I've been making iced tea. I use allulose for the sweetener, by the way. Scott O'Brien's very worried about the strong asthma medicine the doctor put his son on. You should be worried about it, Scott. Uh, usually there's two or three pages of potential side effects. If you can convert your son over to a very low-carb diet with only real human food in it, you're going to be shocked at, at how much better the asthma gets. And you probably won't need that really strong medication at all. Drew, why would a female, 49 years old, doing strict keto war for two months, still not be in ketosis consistently 0.1 night and day? Several reasons for this. If she's eating mostly meat and eggs, then she's going to be in physiological ketosis, whether the, the urine strip or the, or the blood test shows it or not. She's going to be in enough ketosis for her to get the benefits from it. So I wouldn't worry so much about uh, t t treating the meter or trying to achieve a certain number, I would focus 100% of my effort, energy, and money on eating a proper human diet, which is full of meat and eggs and a little bit of veg. And that's she's going to get the results she's looking for, whether that meter ever says 0.9 or not. Tia says, hey, Dr. Berry and Nisha, I'm wondering what you think about moles in sun exposure. I get a lot of sunshine every day. I never burn, and I never use sunscreen. I've been carnivore for seven months. Yeah, so moles are genetic. Uh Sunshine is one of the most natural things that a human body can expose itself to. Uh, other natural things that are really good for a human body include water and food and air. Sun, sunlight goes in with those other things. They are the most natural things that a human being can expose themselves to. Uh, getting a good, healthy amount of sunlight is never going to cause skin cancer. It is not going to cause any of your moles to turn into skin cancer if you are getting a proper amount of sunlight, okay? And the way you know you're getting enough is if you're a little pink when you come out of the sun, you develop a nice golden tan. You're not dark brown like a burned biscuit. You just got a nice, healthy tan. That's the amount of sun you should be getting. That is good for you, not bad for you. <clears throat> Aboard now, 66 keto, six months, triglycerides drop dramatically. Great. However, AG ratio is out of bounds at 3.5. Should I be concerned? Thank you, Dr. Rick. No, keep doing what you're doing. All your ratios are going to be within normal limits within another three to six months. Angie, at 1 p.m. I finished my 24-hour fast. Congratulations. Does your, does your first time in ketosis cause your legs to slightly swell? Sometimes. And sometimes you can have this the first few times, but what's going to ultimately happen, happen to your leg swelling is it's going to go completely away as you continue to eat very low carb and implement some degree of intermittent fasting into your daily routine. Roman, I'm having issues with sticking to ketobor. My depression has kicked in really hard at times and I go nuts on carbs. Any advice? And also, can this help with cancer? Yeah, 100%. Cancer loves sugar. And so if you're eating a diet that's super, super low in sugar, uh, cancer doesn't want you to do that, obviously. What does that sound like to you that that they kind of get down in the dumps and then when they eat carbs, they, they they feel better? What's that sound like? Anybody know? Well, you don't feel better. It just you think you're going to. You feel better for a second and then you feel yeah. worse. And you might feel better, kind of like an alcoholic who's trying to dry out when they drink a, a fifth of vodka. They feel better, right? But that doesn't mean that they are healthier. Uh, what you're probably experiencing is carbohydrate withdrawals that make you feel kind of down in the dumps. And then when you eat the carbs, you get that momentary false spike of pleasure and you think that you feel better when ultimately you kind of feel overall worse. Alicia says, I've always hated American doctors that uh, say about baby food. In Mexico, we feed our infants chicken liver, eggs, cottage cheese from four months on. Hunt, preach. 100%. I love that. Uh, make sure the cottage cheese is full fat. 
hundred percent love that. That's that is the proper human diet for babies. Yes. Thank you, Caesar. Thanks for all the super chats, guys. Uh, this price is too much. My computer's acting weird. Uh, my comments, comments. I've most recently reversed my MS symptoms. When I wake up in the morning, I'm jazzed. Once I eat breakfast, my severe fatigue sets in, and I can't walk without a cane. What is causing this? What are you having for breakfast? Would be my question. Uh, I'm afraid you're having a breakfast that's too high in carbohydrates and you're getting the hyperinsulinemia and then the crash that comes after that. Uh, keep your breakfasts. I would push breakfast, first of all, as late in the day as I could. And then when you do eat breakfast, make sure it's as close to zero carb as you can possibly get. It. Hey, ATN, Thank you. Welcome back. We have a lot of repeat offenders in the comments. Good to see you guys in the new year. All right. Not one, but two says, when will your book be back in stock? Are you writing a new one? Is it out of stock? Yeah, it, uh, Amazon keeps saying it's out of stock, but that's impossible because Amazon, they don't keep any in stock. You, they order one from Victor Bell. Uh, so really weird. the book is in stock. If Amazon's saying it's not in stock, just go to Barnes & Noble or some other online bookstore because it's available in all bookstores. The, even if it's not on the shelf, they can order it for you. That's so weird. Uh, I'm working on a, a book right now called The Proper Human Diet. I'm working on another book with our good friend Kim Howerton called Common Sense Labs, which I'm still waiting to hear back from Victory Belt about. Victory Belt, if you're watching, I need to know, are you taking this book or are we self-publishing? Let me know. Uh, then we're also, I'm working on a book with my good friend Zane Griggs about how men over 50, you ain't old. This is the best time of your life. Uh, quit your whining, get out of the recliner, Put down the ding dongs and let's get you healthy again. So I got three I'm working on right now. All right. For some reason my scroller is just being weird. Caesar, electrolyte drinks seem to be helping with my rapid heart, but now I'm having a cramp in my heart. Yeah, hmm. if you're having chest pain, you need to call nine one one or go to the local emergency room immediately. It's impossible to know uh, what the pain's coming from. If you're having pain anywhere in this area, especially if it's a crampy, dull ache. You got to go see the, the emergency room doctor. Uh, Karen, researching low dose naltoxone. Any thoughts? Do you have any videos? I'm carnivore for a year, but my Hashimoto's inflammation is giving me trouble. My A1C is seven. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I uh, think LDN is worth the shot, but mm -hmm. also if you've been carnivore a year and your A1C is yeah. seven, we need to look at yeah. Yeah. what yeah. kind yeah. of carnivore you're doing. And it's not your fault because there's a lot of stuff on the, every YouTube mm -hmm. channel that's doing carnivore. There are some people that are says carnivore in the title, but then they eat sweet potatoes. Like, you know, there's all kinds of information. So yeah. if you're not doing a true carnivore, which is all meat, all animals, eggs, no vegetables, no fruits, no, no honey, honey, no olive no oil, fruits. no avocado oil, no MCT oil, everything is from an animal, then it, do that. You're either a misdiagnosed type one diabetic. Yeah, it could be that. Or you're, you think that honey and fruit is carnivore any day. Not true carnivore, not for someone who's trying to yeah. cure or put their Hashimoto's in remission mm -hmm. and lower their A1C. 100%. So. Yes. Uh, heavy sigh. Thank you so much for the super chat. Mike. Hey, Mike. Been carnivore for a few weeks. Triglycerides went up 50 points. LDL went down, but so did my HDL, which is 34. Also, had to get rid of the diarrhea. So you're just in a few weeks. Yeah. The diarrhea is self limited. After a few weeks, it's going to just taper and go away. And also your triglycerides, you're always going to have some fluctuation of your blood sugar, your triglycerides, lots of these numbers. But what you're going to notice as the months go on is that your triglycerides come down to a very low, beautiful, normal number. Uh, hey, Michelle, welcome to the tribe. Hey, where did that go? Somebody said chicken liver for a baby. Yes. 100% genius. Think about, yes. listen, okay, so chicken liver for a baby as opposed to Rice Krispie Treats. Okay, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say green peas that are mushed up and have corn syrup in them. It's the better option here. Yeah. Liver pate is super smooth in texture. So those moms who are scared, because I get it, uh, feels like your baby's going to, I have to feed them mush or they're going to die, which is yeah. not true. Beckett ate all kinds of real food, but that's a pure protein, fat, delicious, nutritious soft food for a baby it is the perfect food for a baby just like an egg yolk there is no food that's that's more nutrient dense and better for your baby than, than yeah also i meant to say when we did scrambled eggs for beckett it was just the yolk so we didn't give him the whites it was all the yolk yep uh, do you have something over there you oh, want to talk see. about because i got plenty 
buddy. I no, I keep going. I was just, I was just looking around, see if I could see anything. Uh, Can I eat cheese on carnivore? Sharon says. Depends. Full, yeah, full fat fermented hard cheese is fine for most people. Some of us have to li even limit the cheese, but uh, if you're eating real cheese, then it's probably fine. Depends on the cheese, depends on the person, depends on the amount of cheese. For some people, it's you have to figure it out, kind of. Keto Mama says, what can you do for Bell's palsy, please? Um, wait, patience. There, there is no quick turnaround. There is no quick fix. There are a few YouTube videos. It's like, oh, fix Bell's palsy in 24 hours. That's complete and utter horseshit. Uh, when this happens, the nerve basically has to uh, remyelinate. It's just going to take time. Uh, you want to keep your eye moisture, moisturized and, and tape it at night if you're having trouble with your, your eyelid not wanting to close. If it's just a droopy mouth, just have something to wipe the, the saliva and give it time. It's going to, it'll, it'll, 99% of the time it goes away, but it just takes time. Do you not? I've watched 95% of your videos and I know what I need to do as far as eating properly, but I'm having massive issues with self-control. Usually I'm a carnivore for four to five days and then I fall off for one to two days. Yep. When so, somebody so when somebody tries to break an addiction on their own, that's the exact pattern you see. So if somebody tries to quit alcohol, cold turkey on their own, they'll do fine for three to five days and then they fall off the wagon and they screw up. This is addiction. You've got to admit to yourself. Look in the mirror and say, you're a carb addict. And it's okay. I love you. But you've got to understand that and you've got to get all the carbs out of your house, out of your pantry, out of the fridge, out of your car, out of your office. you got to get the carbs as far away from yourself. So you literally have to get in the car, drive to town, buy some carbs, bring them home and eat them. Because in a moment of weakness, if you have an addiction, if there's carbs in there, you're going to go get them. So it sounds like you know all that already. What you need is maybe a support system and a carb addicted buddy. So that you guys can like keep each other on the wagon. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reason why Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics, and like there's groups, there's steps. Like you, you need that. If you're on your own, most of the time the devil on your shoulder is going to convince you that it's just, it's fine. Just have a bite. And if you have somebody you can reach out to and be like, dang it, I'm having a moment. Yep. And they can talk you off the ledge and you can talk them off the ledge mm -hmm. and join a group, join. Any kind of coaching group, you know, they could. Well, yeah, I mean, join. I wasn't going to self and. Well, I, I know just how good you are at this. So let me sell for you. Nisha has a group. She has a coaching group. that. Well, it's it's a community, support community. There's a free version. So if you just want the free version to hook up with other people, there's that. Or you can pay and then be in a private group and we do lives just like this, Q&As, Zoom calls and stuff. Leanne says, how do I wean off levothyroxine? Leanne, you may never be able to wean off levothyroxine. Uh, if you have hypothyroidism, you may always need thyroid replacement hormone. I would prefer it if you would switch over to a real thyroid hormone like Armor or Nature. Uh, find a doctor who'll do that if your doctor won't. But you may always need some thyroid hormone replacement for the rest of your life. That's not a failure if you do. Cindy wants to know, is there ever a reason to take a statin? No. Next question. What about after a bypass surgery? Yeah, if you've had a heart attack. In the past, not a stent, not a, not anything like that, nothing preemptive. But if you had a literal heart attack, then you might benefit from taking a low dose statin. That is literally the only humans on the planet, even people with familial hypercholesterolemia (FH). Uh, that's the statins is not really what's helping you. Dr. David Diamond again, Diamond like the ring. He has tons of videos about people for people with familial hypercholesterolemia you're not going to benefit from a statin. And if you're taking a statin for primary prevention, which means you've never had a heart attack, the research is very clear. You're wasting your time and money. If you take the statin for 20 years, it might add three days to your life. Maybe. Marshall, is it normal to get the keto carnivore flu more than once in the first month? If so, what can cause this? Yeah, if you, if you fell off the wagon a little and ate some carbs, then you kind of got to go through the withdrawals again. And that's, that's very common. And don't be uh, upset about that. Don't feel guilty. Don't give up. Just know I'm getting there, but I'm not getting there in a straight line. I'm getting there kind of like this, okay? And so if you catch yourself here, it's okay, because tomorrow you're going to be back up here. Honda guy. Honda guy. What's your opinion on keto ice creams like the Rebel and Halo Top with 4 to 10 net carbs? Yep. The first of all, they don't really taste that good. Yep. 
to me. Mammoth Creamery is the best tasting one, and I don't even think you can get that everywhere. It's a Texas brand. Uh, you can make your own pretty pretty easily. Just yes. get an ice cream maker. They're worth the investment if you're someone who really 100%. likes ice cream. Three ingredients basically is all you need to make homemade ice cream, mm -hmm. and it tastes so good. And then if you want fancy ice cream, Carrie Brown has a ice cream cookbook. I think you can find it online. It's not as big, but it's like $9. The best ice keto ice cream recipes yep. I've ever had in my life. Like, tastes like a legit, it's not even really ice cream. It's more like gelato. It's very, mm -hmm. very creamy, great recipes. But now, what am I going to say next? You don't need ice cream. It's time to grow up, okay? Use your ice cream as a temporary crutch to get through the carb withdrawals, to get through that period of adjustment where you think you need snacks and you need dessert. You don't need any of that shit at all, okay? You need meat and eggs. That's what you need. And But I understand we went through the the, the transformation process where we had fat bombs and, and what was the rebel ice cream and all that no, stuff. we never bought the ice cream. We had some kind of ice cream. Well. Yep, we tried it. it. We tried it. It just tastes terrible. So Nisha started making it. What is it? Cream. It's heavy cream. Egg, egg yolks, yolks. Vanilla. Oh my god! That's it. Best ice cream in the freaking world. Yeah. Uh, Nisha, do you have a recipe for liver pate, or do you get it prepared? Yes and yes. So there's a recipe on my YouTube channel at Nisha Loves It. Just type in Nisha Berry Liver Pate Liver Mousse. It'll pop it up. Or there's a really good brand at Kroger and Sprouts and Whole Foods that uh, is almost perfect if you don't want to put the time and effort in and um i can't remember the brand of it but i've got several videos on my channel i think the top 10 ketovore foods i eat every week i'm pretty sure liver pate is in that video nathan says wants to go carnivore but love veggies which are the best few to use to wean and go along uh go line in full carny uh i've got a youtube video about the lowest carb veggies those are the ones i would focus on unless they seem to cause inflammation I would, uh, if you're going to eat some veg, you want to eat the lowest carb veg you can. I think that video's got like three or four million views now. Stockton Guide, 2002. I've been following Dr. Berry's advice for 10 months. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I did enjoy my grandma's Christmas cookies, though. Thank you, Doc. Once a year, I think it's fine. Robert, if everyone ate healthy, wouldn't that crush the medical interest industrial complex? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Imagine that Sherry, if they had the, to get real jobs. What is the best way to naturally treat hyperparathyroid? And hello, Granny Berry. Oh, from your, her, Hurricane, Hurricane Utah. Utah. You guys don't have hurricanes. What was the question? Oh, hyperparathyroid. There is no natural way to treat hyperparathyroid. you got to see your doc and get referred to endocrinology. There's no that natural way to fix that. John Sebastian, welcome back. Hey, Dr. Berry, does carnivore diet provide all the essential electrolytes, especially potassium? Yes, it does. Magnesium. Yes, it does. Two, two, two points. Uh, yes, it does. Secondly, you're not going to need nearly as many electrolytes, okay? Just like when you're eating a high-carb diet, you need lots of vitamin C because vitamin C competes with sugar for the same receptors. But when you're eating a, a very low-carb or zero-carb diet, you don't need vitamin C that you can't find in meat. Uh, the same goes for potassium and magnesium. Most people notice that when they're converting, going through low-carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore, they need electrolytes to get through that. But once they're there, uh, many, many carnivores never use any of the electrolyte supplements, and they do just great. Rowena, more than anything, your nature's heart for the people is what got me through some difficult times. Thank you for keeping those embers of flame. Thank well, you, you know, Rowena. Rowena, the people need somebody. Because all you get from Harvard School of Public Health and, and Tufts Nutrition is you need to eat a plant-based diet, lots of whole grains. And that doesn't help anybody's health unless you're living on Cheetos and Pepsi, right, and honey buns. And then you switch to plant-based. Yeah, you're going to get that's a little less bad. But if what you're looking for is the best health you've ever had at this age in your life, you're going to have to listen to us. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to ignore Harvard and all the other smart dumbasses because they're not going to give you advice that really helps you long term. It's pronounced hurricane. Hurricane. Not hurricane. hurricane. FC, can you talk to us specifically about Hashimoto's and diet along with perimenopause? Yes, talk about Hashimoto's and diet along with perimenopause. Yeah, you need to eat a proper human diet. You need to eat very low carb, lots of meat, lots of eggs. A few nuts, a few berries, a few veg, and that's the diet that every human on the planet should eat. Is sour cream okay on carnivore? Depends. If it's full fat, I don't think it's terrible. 
Some people, yes. Some people but some don't. people, it's inflammatory. That's right. You have Brian, to find out. my cardiologist doesn't want to order a coronary scan because I'm under 40. I'm 37. I became a bad type 2 diabetic three years ago, diabetes, uh, DKA in the ICU. Now pre-diabetic. I never drank or smoked. Could I? Should I go somewhere and pay for one or yes. hold on? Go, go get one. And then I want you to ask your doctor, Doc, have you ever known of a type 2 diabetic to have a heart attack in their 40s? Because I have. I know of 40-year-old type 2 diabetics who had a heart attack. So just because you're not yet 40, what the, I mean, if you weren't diabetic and you were perfectly healthy, I might say, oh, you don't really need that. But if you want to spend the money and the time to get it, get it. Yes, go get it and then send your doctor a copy. Annie, 31-year-old boyfriend is sleepy all day. Coffee doesn't help him. Low libido, no motivation. He's at a healthy weight but has very high blood pressure. He's keto for for two months but has, hasn't seen any change yet. Yeah, he needs to keep eating a proper human diet. Ketovore is on that spectrum. And after another month or two of that, if he's still having these symptoms, he needs to go get his hormones checked. Charles, welcome back, Barry. He's just started hey, taking Relight in the morning on an empty stomach but get loose stools in like 10 minutes after that. Is that normal? It is for you, Charles. That means you don't need any. Okay. Um, and I know you're, you're, you're using the Relight, which is a great product to try to get what you think you, you need, which is lots of electrolytes, but obviously your body's getting enough electrolytes. And the way it's letting you know that is you're getting the shits when you take the electrolytes on the empty stomach. So that means you don't need them. Stop. Mama. Brenda, stop. Try to like you are so behind and you don't care. I do. Brenda, help. I'm a protective mom because I love my babies. They are teens now, but I can't get past the fat and the grease. I'm encouraging them to eat. Yeah. So you still believe that that fat is unhealthy. And that means that there is a chink in your armor of knowledge. So you need to go back and watch some of my YouTube videos and my other friends' YouTube videos. And not only intellectually understand that fat, good fat, healthy fats are good for your babies and good for you. They're not bad in any way. OK, you still have got to you've got to get that irrational belief out of your head and out of your heart. Uh, anyone know when baby berry is due? July 21st. July 21st. Supposedly. You guys think it's going to be a boy or a girl? I'm feeling boy. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. No. No, I feel like you it's a boy. You just want to feel a boy. I want it to be a boy, too, but I don't think it is. Brooklyn Cares. Day 62 of carnivore, best decision I've ever made. I have cerebral palsy, and I've noticed a huge decrease in my pain. Uh, how long until I should notice a decrease in anxiety? Yeah, so you've probably already had a benefit to your anxiety, but it's, it's harder to really know that, uh, if, especially if you've been an anxious person person all your life, you may always have more anxiety than you would personally like to have. Uh, but if you're, if you've got, if you've been on carnivore 62 days and your cerebral palsy pain and symptoms are better, your anxiety is better too, but it's just not as, as much better as you'd like for it to be. Keep doing what you're doing. And social keto coach, I had to mentally slap myself the other day. I convinced myself it was fine to order pizza. It was fine. And then five minutes later, I called back and canceled. No excuse. I love it. Congratulations. Love it. Do you, you know how done. hard well it is to call and cancel a pizza yeah. after you've already been through it? And you're like, nope, I'm committed. That's excellent. Because once I it gets it. to your house, you're definitely not throwing it away. Like you're eating that. Good for you. I'm so proud of you. All right. Sherry Love, we try to be blunt and honest because I think real people, they want real solutions. They want real information and they want it just, they want me to put it bluntly and be real about it. That's what we try to do. Sometimes Nisha tries to temper my bluntness, but I think I, I like people who just tell it like it is. And I so I try to, to be one of those people. Bluntness. I just think sometimes you get, yes. you talk more than you have to, like you already made your point. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. You yeah, may be right. I'm too upset about it. It's like, okay. So you got something over there you want to say? Um, yeah. You got something over there you want to say? keeping it real. Uh, two crazy ketos. Hey, you guys. They said they love my bluntness. So, so Did I say I didn't love your bluntness? Well, no. Uh, I mean, I I'm don't trying know. to answer these people's questions. All right? Brenda Lopez took my A1C from 9.4 down to 6.2 and have also lost 80 pounds. Well done, Brenda. Now it's time to teach your friends and family how to do this. You guys, 
Give Brenda the thumbs up, man. That's so awesome. Well done, Brenda. Team Bonnie Berry. Ray, you can eat a proper human diet without a gallbladder. There's uh, hundreds of thousands of people who are eating keto, ketovore, carnivore without a gallbladder. I know that you hear that rumor out there that you can't do that. Uh, but yes, you 100% can eat a proper human diet, even without a gallbladder. Stop that. Oh, my God. <sighs> uh, Candace Dallas says, any advice for leg cramps? Yeah. Increase your magnesium. Increase your potassium. Increase your salt. Uh, be more active. Use those leg muscles. And then uh, you might even need to focus on getting a little bit more calcium in the food that you eat. All uh, If you're low in any of those things, it can cause leg cramps. And if none of that fixes it, it's time to go see your doctor. Lane, uh, low lane, like Joe Lane. Low, low lane, lane, low lane. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. That's how it's spelled. She said, you're on your her last nerve. I though. am. Can you tell that too? Everybody is. Me and low lane would like for you to take a breath. Well, guess you shouldn't have knocked me up then. <laughs> <coughs> Couldn't be helped. Uh, Gail wants to know, is there a pink salt you recommend? Uh, yeah, it's called Redmond's Real Salt right there. They mine it in the United States of America, in Utah. It's under 300 feet of bentonite clay. You can buy this anywhere now. You can get it at Walmart, Sprouts, Whole Foods. Yep. Our Amish grocery store has it. Yep, 100%. <laughs> you don't want evaporated ocean water from our modern oceans because it's full of microplastics and probably got some Fukushima in there as well. You want a salt that is mined from deep under the ground on the continent that you live. So if you're in Asia, then eat pink Himalayan. If you're in Australia, 424 is a, a great salt. There's salts like that on every continent. What's it called? 424 in Australia. I was trying to think of that yeah, for an yeah, hour the yeah. other day. And I was it's just delicious like, salt. It. Delicious salt. <laughs> but you want a salt that's been mined from deep underground. You do not want evaporated ocean water. Uh, what supplements do you recommend? For most people, if you're eating lots of meat and eggs and eating liver once a week, then you probably need some vitamin D uh, in the winter. You need uh, D3K2. D, D3K2, and you need to get your minerals because a lot of the food that we eat today in modern society is depleted in minerals. That's why I help Keto Chow design their daily mineral drops. I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, we take iodine as well, but that's in the mineral drops. So if you take the mineral drops, then you don't need that. That's right. That's right. Um, Gahura? 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 Any Gahura? thoughts on asymptomatic hyperparathyroidism? My calcium levels both in blood and urine are high and scan indicated and adenoma on one of the glands. No symptoms whatsoever. Yeah, you need to have the adenoma removed. Okay, if your doctor's acting like that's not a big deal, you need a second opinion. You're at very high risk of kidney stones, depression, uh, abdominal pain. Lots of problems come from untreated hyperparathyroidism. You need you need to see a specialist for that. Uh, Danny, I'm on biologic for psoriasis and ankylosing spondylitis. So I would like to wean off it eventually after being on carnivore keto for a while. My doctor is advising against this. Yep. How can I take her off? So you go to your doctor and you say, I am going to wean off the biologic. OK, I can do it without you or I can, but I would prefer to do it with your learned health partner advice and help. And when you put it like that, your doctor will help you wean that down. And so here's the thing. If you wean that down and then you have a flare up, all you have to do is get back on it. It's not a big deal. But doctors act like, oh, my God, you can never stop that or your body will explode. No, no. The, the worst possible thing that could happen is you might have a flare up. But if you're eating a proper human diet for, I'd say, go at least six months of pure proper human diet no bullshit or junk no keto cakes cookies pies none of that crap just real whole food that human beings have been able to eat for at least the last fifty thousand years then go see your doctor after six months of that and say okay it's time to wean this down are you going to help me or not valkyrie what is a polite way to get co-workers and friends to back off when judging me being on carnivore and fasting uh, if you've already been polite, then it's time to just tell them to shut up. Um, yeah. but if you haven't talked to them yet, just say, I have to do this for my health. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, just like, yeah, make it sound like they're being the rude ones because they are being the rude ones. Yeah. So just say, so, okay, don't go take it away. So <laughs> two, well, two, two things, 
First of all, tell them you're allergic. If, if, if so, because if it were me, I'd want to fight. I'd be like, come at me, bro. Let's talk about this. You tell me why I shouldn't eat the diet that human beings have eaten for the last three million years. Tell me how that's bad. So shut up, okay? But if you're not that kind of person, and some people are, are not that kind of person, you can say, look, I'm allergic to vegetable seed oils and to grains. When I eat them, I, ha I have inflammation and swelling. So you're telling me I should be unhealthy and be inflamed so to make you happy? That's one way you can put it. Uh, the second way you can put it is that you have to eat this way to control your chronic medical diseases, right? A third way you can put it is, look, I'm a carbohydrate addict. If I were an alcoholic, would you say, oh, don't be a baby, have a drink? Because that's what you're saying to me when I'm a carbohydrate addict, a sugar addict, and you're literally trying to push sugar on me, you might as well try to be giving uh, whiskey to an alcoholic. And that's pretty shitty. So please stop that. How about that? Some good strategies there. I don't From, know if any of those were polite, but okay. <laughs> I felt like a couple were kind of polite. Yeah, Blue Dove. You, you get attitude. Blue Dove says seafood for iodine, 100%. Do not forget seafood is part of a proper human diet from keto all the way to carnivore. Eat all the shellfish, all the oysters, all the crustaceans, all that stuff is part of a proper human diet, 100%. Karen, patient, oh, part two, uh, was zero carbs but started having low acid issues. So I added coffee, pickles, and Altoids. A1C went from 14 years ago to 6.7 and then 7.0. No other carbs. Yeah, stop the Altoids and pickles. Um, there, there is no such thing as a low acid issue. If you're talking about stomach acid, if you're not taking an acid blocker and you're eating a proper human diet, you're going to have plenty of stomach acid. Uh, if you're talking about acid somewhere else, then I don't understand what you're talking about. Stop the pickles and Altoids. You don't need that. Altoids? Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Stop that. But I mean, like, why Altoids? Yeah, why? Well, well, I don't know. I'm sure some guru told them that Altoids would help them produce more acid. That's very interesting. No, just... People give the dumbest advice. It just it just blows whoa, me away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I'll find one. Why you no, you won't situated. either. I guarantee you. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Did you find anything? No. Yeah, Gail, Gail says, I take zinc, D3, uh, vitamin C, magnesium, and B12. Do I need all that? Well, Gail, if you're eating lots of meat, you're not going to need the B12 at all. Uh, if you're, if you live in a Northern or very Southern climate, you just don't get enough sun. You may need the, the vitamin D3, the vitamin C. If you're eating a super low carbohydrate diet, you don't need to take a vitamin C supplement at all. You may or may not need zinc. The daily minerals have zinc in them. If you'd rather just get all your minerals at once, instead of focusing on taking this, you know, zinc and this and this and that, just get your daily minerals. And Did you run the tractor today? Uh, for a minute, yeah. You smell like straight up tractor grease. I'm a <laughs> farmer. That's what I smell like. Bill, two stands less February. I quit all meds except for the aspirin. Uh, what do you recommend for my diet? Yeah, you need to eat as close to zero carb as you can. Any carbohydrates that you do eat need to be in the form of, of uh, vegetables, nuts, or berries. You need to be eating lots of meat and eggs. Eat a little bit of cheese. Uh, eat some veg. Eat some fruit. fruit uh, not fruits. Eat some berries. Eat some nuts. But you need either need to be keto, ketovore, or carnivore. And I've got videos on all three of those. She's got some great ketovore videos on her channel. Nisha loves it. Though that's the diet. You need a proper human diet to protect your heart from any further damage. The damage was done by the sugar and the hyperinsulinemia that the sugar caused. It wasn't done. It wasn't caused by saturated fat or cholesterol in your diet. Uh, speaking of my channel, if you or a friend are pregnant and want to eat low carb, I'm currently pregnant and I'll be doing my first trimester roundup this week. So if somebody needs to hear that information Talk about prenatals, what I've been eating, meat aversions, all that kind of stuff. So. Terry, the farm animals are doing great. Um, we're in the process of maybe expanding the size of the farm. So this spring I'll be able to uh, get by more sheep, hopefully. Uh, Jennifer says, what carnivore foods have calcium? I have a YouTube video about high calcium foods. And then also I've got a recent video about how to use eggshells to get all of the natural, highly absorbable calcium that your body's ever going to need. AC, what are your thoughts on carnivore diet eliminating hemorrhoids? We've had a lot of people reach out and tell us that their hemorrhoids are much less severe on ketovore or carnivore. And it's because... When you're eating a high fiber diet, that makes your poop bigger. Okay. So if you've got a, you know, if, if the exit is sore, 
and has a problem, then why would you want to try to move more roughage through the exit? Trying to be diplomatic here, but do you get me? You want you want to have a small, you have want to have small, tiny bowel movements. And the way to do that is to not eat any roughage or fiber to eat meat and eggs. Then you're going to poop the least of any of the of the diets. And your hemorrhoids will thank you for that. They will get much less inflamed and hurt much less often. Mm, Rick Stout, there's nothing wrong with pickles. There's nothing wrong with pickles unless your A1C is still seven, in which case you may be eating a lot of carbs every day. I don't know how many pickles our, our I person mean, was eating. I would, it would be hard for that to be the problem. Pickles have carbs. Two cr okay. A seven? You think pickles made someone's A1C a seven? If you're eating a quart of pickles a day, yeah, 100%. A seven? Yeah, yeah. You've seen that happen? No. It's no. all about the carb count. It's all about the total carbs. I, I doubt they're eating that many pickles, but something's making their A1C seven, and it's not the meat. Okay, ninety nine point nine percent of people watching this can eat pickles as long as they're not sugar, but bread and butter pickles. I totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> uh, Too crazy keto says, "Sorry, we can't see you this weekend, Nisha. Oh, you're gonna need to see them. Oh, you guys gonna be there? Gonna Excellent. Be I feel like they've went. All the things. Yeah, you yeah. guys are at all the things. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to see you guys. So dedicated. I get hugs and you don't. They'll send me hugs. Mm. Pregnancy knows. That's right. Yeah. Getting stuff done says pickles can have a lot of sugar added. That's right. You got to yeah, read the ingredients. they can, but. Got to read the ingredients. Only like one version. You're eating dill, crispy, mm. salty pickles. Yeah. All you got to do is turn that thing around. Should say no pickles, sugar. salt, pickles, salt, vinegar. Yep. Carmen says, Is there a way to eat omega 3s if you get nauseous from fatty fish? Yep. I've got a video on this channel about omega 3 rich foods that aren't necessarily fish. Yeah. Hmm. 2,700 people watching. Somebody said, Yes, there are. Look at that. Oh, man. Boom. Love you guys. Thank you. Brand new here. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow. It's Tuesday. It's another day. It's Tuesday. Yeah, we do a... Our, there's our baby. Toto. Our private community, we do an extra live on Tuesdays and extra lives on Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Wednesday. That's on Patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes. If, if you've got more in-depth questions, become a patron and you get access to th two or three additional live Q&As just like this each and every week, unless I have a virus, which I did last week. So I apologize for being tardy, but we're back in the saddle this week. Sharon says, my husband has temporary high output ileostomy. Can he still be carnivore? Oh, 100% because he's going to decrease gonna the output tremendously. Yes. Oh, 100%. Yes. If you have an ileostomy, a jejunostomy, a colonoscopy, you 100% can eat keto, ketovore, or carnivore. And if, you, if you'd like to change your bag as le least often as possible, carnivore, 100%, you, you, because you don't make as much poop on a carnivore diet because it's all nutrition. Thank you, Sherry. Love you, too. Nisha, love your necklace you have on tonight. Isn't that, right, isn't that subtle but sweet but beautiful? Edward Gill, no, no, no. Edward no. Gill says, Dr. Yeah. Barry, you look like you're aging in reverse. <laughs> this bump, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Go ahead. Ernesto has asked this several times, okay. and I keep losing him. Okay. What's your experience with AFib and keto carnivore? Yeah, you have less uh, frequent flare-ups. Uh, now, it, depending on what's causing your AFib, you may still need to see the cardiologist. You may still need to have an ablation or some other procedure. But on average, AFib becomes less severe and you have less frequent flare-ups when you're eating a proper human diet. Somebody just got a pickle because they're talking about pickles. Enjoy your pickle. Cindy, ever since I had the flu two weeks ago, I seem to be, have a beef aversion. No, I'm not pregnant. How long will this last? I think this is more common than we mm -hmm. talk about. It is. Yeah. It is. And a lot after this virus that I had, my taste is not back 100%. And so I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll cook my two pounds of beef. And I'll eat a pound, pound and a half. I'm like, well, I'm done. I don't want any more. It's nothing to worry about. It's short-lived. It's going to go away. Don't worry about it. Hey, thanks for the super chat. Sydney. Hey, there's Becky Berry. Hello, Becky Berry. Hello. <laughs> All your friends say hi. Mike thinks that, that Toto wants a pickle. You want your gyroscope? Where's your gyroscope? Oh, yes. Here it is. What is this? A gyroscope. 
gyroscope. Our two-year-old carnivore baby knows what a gyroscope is and knows how to play with it. Yeah. Give it to me, Dada. So whoever the pediatrician is that said avoid meat and eggs, would you like your two-year-old to know what a gyroscope is and be able to pronounce the word? Feed your baby meat and eggs. Paul says NSB Wellness is fabulous. I totally agree. Paul, thank you for Paul. that. Bye, baby. Uh, Boink wants to know when Dr. Baby Beckett is going to start answering questions. Probably in another month or two. I mean, he'll Will answer be my guess. some, yeah. but usually not when I want him to. Beckett. Yeah, Landa, you're not going to benefit from the statins. If you want to take a low dose of the statin just to basically placate your doctor, I understand the compromise of that. But if you if you want to take a statin to to prolong your life, that's not going to do it. Oh, wow. Nice. I wish I could make that the thumbnail. JTDDA loves your bacon chips, Nisha. Mm, that video is on your bacon chips. Is it on my channel no, or your it's channel? On my channel? Yeah, if you guys want to know how to make the tastiest bacon chips on the planet, go to Nisha Loves It and watch her bacon chip video. It's the oh, best boy. chili um, cooking keto with faith.com. The best. Follow the recipe. Don't ask questions. There's Yep. A very specific ingredient, fish sauce. And Just you're going to be sure like, it's clean. Get fish them, sauce. Get clean fish sauce because some fish sauce has a lot of sugar. Get the clean version. It makes a huge difference. It's, so it's the best chili is ever. Is Diet Coke okay? That depends on who you ask. Yeah, Diet Coke is not great. It's much better than regular Coke. And if you need to drink Diet Coke as you transition until the point where you can drink sparkling water and leave the, the uh, carbonated. The is also on. And leave the carbonated soda that's made in a chemical factory, leave that out of your mouth, then great. Use the Diet Coke as a temporary crutch to get by. Uh, Nisha has a video about how to how we weaned off of, of Diet Soda, and now we just drink sparkling water. It's Dr. Berry's method. Yeah, it's my method. It's the Dr. Berry method of weaning off of Cokes. Yeah. Zevia is okay. Yeah, most people, I think, do fine on Zevia. But for some people, they even have to cut that out. Baby Joda. Oh, I can't do that to yours. No, you can't. Stop touching it. Oh, hello there. Olive, uh, how are you doing? Baby this is Olive. Joda. Diagnosed with CKD at 15%. Started, I should consider a transplant. Also on strict diet, mm -hmm. low potassium, low sodium, low protein. Mm -hmm. uh, caused by inflammation and diabetes with the CKD. Has stabilized my A1C and sugars. Can I reverse this with the PhD? You might be able to reverse it to some degree, but you've got a ton of damage. You you ate a shitty diet for decades and decades, and now uh, the, the, the price is is coming due and I'm sorry about that. You might be able to increase your your kidney function some, but you're probably not gonna be able to reverse it back to normal. James wants to know cornbread. I have a fantastic keto five version of cornbread. Best cornbread in the world. It's the best. You're not gonna find a better one. Mm -hmm. And I don't toot my own horn a lot, but toot toot, okay? And it yep. is on my blog, Nisha Loves It .com. It's also on my YouTube channel. So if you type in Nisha Berry Keto cornbread, it'll pop up. You're welcome. I am a country boy. I have eaten keto cornbread since I could walk, probably before I could walk. I've had lots of different cornbread. And I'm talking about the old-fashioned cornbread that's that's high in carbs and full of corn. Her cornbread is better than the best cornbread I have ever had in my life. Here in Tennessee, when you're a member of 4-H, once a year, what do they have a competition? Cornbread, competition. cornbread cooking competition. <laughs> yes. But her cornbread, which is keto, is absolutely low carb cornbread, is the best cornbread I have ever had in my life. And I'm a redneck. If you've had it, put it put in the comments that you've had my cornbread. You can make the cornbread with the chili and it's perfect. What you doing over there, son? What you doing over here, boy? You got your monster truck? <laughs> you come to me. Maybe I can, maybe that's his new thing. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. Maybe you can show everybody your monster truck. Oh, Carrie's uh, nickname growing up was cornbread and gave it up to go carnivore. Your cornbread's almost carnivore. It's, it's almost, it's almost. almost carnivore. It's made with pork rind and crumbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Ooh, that's you smiling at me? Yeah, that is me smiling at you. <laughs> you tell everybody hi. Hi. What's your name? Can you spell it? Yeah. Oh. That's you're about to spell bleepy, weren't you? B-E-C-K-E-T-T. -T. Can you do it? 
And What's your yet. whole name? Beckett what? He's getting close. He gets the first three letters. Beckett what? What's your favorite animal? Um, um, huh. I'm a animal. You're an animal? You're an animal? What kind of animal are you? Um, let me see. What kind of animal are you? I, I'm a no, a mammal. A mammal. That's a mammal. right. That's right. You are Very a mammal. Good. Are you a mammal? I am a mammal. Yes, mommy's a mammal. Is daddy a mammal? No. What? What am I? You're a dinosaur. <laughs> Hey, there you go. Out of the mouths of babes. So Beckett, Dr. Beckett, Baby Berry is now answering questions. Yeah. Uh, Barbara, there is a link to her cornbread. If you if you look for if you look for Nisha Loves It on YouTube. If you just Google Nisha Berry Keto Cornbread. There you go. That's how you find it. Is that mine? Yeah. Sheila made your cornbread and it's freaking delicious. Paula says, hi, Beckett. Thanks for the super chat, Enrico. Thank you so much. He is pretty cute, isn't he, Sunny Star? I know, right? Uh, Danielle says, white willow bark instead of aspirin. Well, aspirin comes from willow bark. So um, then it goes to the chemical factory. But if you'd rather take white willow bark instead, uh, it's more natural. But the only problem is is, is your, it's hard to get your dosage correct, right? Because... Uh, the the bark from one willow tree is not going to have as much as another willow tree. And that's the only benefit from taking an aspirin rather than using willow bark is you get a more uh, routine standard dosage. Yeah, as old as a dinosaur, Brian. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Etienne says, my seven-year-old son says we forget stuff more around Halloween and Christmas because of all the carbs and sugar. Yep. You're probably right. Smart child. I love it. Yes. Right. Deborah Beckett is very cute. He takes after his mother. Are you hiding from Poppy? Stephanie Anderson says, can you cure or reverse a hernia? Virtually never, Stephanie. This is a, this is a traumatic thing that happens to your body. And uh, almost always you have to have a surgical correction for this. Now, many people have a, a small hernia that doesn't cause any pain. There's no reason to, yeah. to rush to have that surgically corrected. But for it to go away, you're going to have to have a surgical procedure. Yeah. Someone wants to know, can you have garlic on carnivore? I think for most people, you yep. can have garlic as a seasoning, not like seven cloves as a side, you know, but as a seasoning. Right. Exactly. exactly. Alberto, you can absolutely... Uh, what was your question? Can we eat raw meat? Yes, Alberto. If you want to eat raw meat, make sure it smells good. Make sure it's fresh. Make sure you know where it came from and enjoy. Yes. <laughs> Beckett, you got a super chat. Can you say thank you? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, you Sherry. Thank you he very thank much. You. Uh, gout diet. I've got a YouTube video about gout. Any of you guys that suffer from gout, stop being afraid of meat and high purine foods. That has nothing to do with why you're having gout. Watch my YouTube video about gout and how to prevent it. Valkyrie, both of my parents are diabetic and don't believe it's possible to reverse diabetes with keto, carnivore, and fasting. What advice would you give them? I mean, uh, they sound like they're, they're pretty opinionated and set in their ways. There may not be any advice for them. They may just have to live their life. Uh, if you can find an aunt or an uncle or a friend who's not you, who can say, uh, yeah, I know people who've reversed it. Watch Dr. Barry's YouTube videos. That might be all it takes. Because a lot of times when an adult child is trying to tell an adult parent something, the parent's just not going to listen to you, especially if they, have, if they have a carb addiction and they want their carbs. But if they hear it from a good friend or the neighbor down the street or the guy they have coffee with every morning, a lot of times they'll hear that. And then they'll be like, oh, you know what you can do? You can reverse diabetes. And you'll be like, really, mom, really? Because I told you that six months ago and you said I was stupid. Stephanie, can ketovore or can carnivore be safe for my husband after he's had a heart attack and has stents? 100%. He needs to eat a proper human diet. His blockages, his damage was caused by too many carbs, too much sugar, and hyperinsulinemia. I've got a brand new video about uh, the unknown epidemic of hyperinsulinemia. I'm going to revert, I'm going to release it tomorrow morning on this channel. And it talks about cardio, uh, coronary vascular disease. It talks about hypertension. It talks about diabetes and how all these things, all of them, are caused by hyperinsulinemia, which is caused from too many carbs in your diet. Can you put the cookbook link in your description, please? 
Yes, everybody's asking about Nisha's cookbook. Uh, now, it's, well, a, it's a co collaboration. It's my some or my recipes, and some are Kim Howerton's, and some are Kim and I did together recipes. Like she comes and stays for a few weeks, and we work on recipes together. So, yeah, yes, absolutely. I and as soon as this video is over, you'll give me the the link, and I'll I post it was the, in there. I thought I already sent it to you. I guess not. I don't think I've got it. It's uh, on KimHowerton.com. It's on her website. If you go to KimHowerton.com and click on books, it's the one that says Kim and Nisha's Holiday Cookbook. I have to go. You have to go? I have to pay. Okay. It's the top of the hour. We're done. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for all the super chats. Thanks for hanging out and having fun with us and asking your questions. If you didn't get your question answered, if you've got a more detailed question about medications, about medical conditions, about nutrition, then become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link down in the show notes. Super quick sign up. We do three extra lives a week, just like this. But instead of having 2,500 people asking questions, we've got 50, 100, 150, 200 people asking questions. So I can answer questions in much deeper detail. Thanks so much for hanging out. Say hi to Loki. That's our other cat. Also a rescue cat. Look at him. He looks so serene. And she. So, she, whatever. Okay, it's a cat. Animal Fast for Cooking, Ken Watts. That's right. All right, guys, we're out of here. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.